Hi and welcome to this edition of Mobile Tech Videos. Today we'll be taking you through an in-depth look at how to tether your Samsung Captivate phone with stock firmware, non-rooted, using Samsung keys. So without further ado, let's get involved. Go ahead and download the Samsung Captivate folder um, from the link that's given to you in the More Info section. Open into Tethering Files and go ahead and double click the Samsung USB driver for mobile phones. I verify that this, this works on Windows 7, 64-bit and 32-bit editions as well as Windows XP 32-bit. Um, so go ahead and double click it. Say yes if you're prompted for user account control. After that we're going to be presented uh, with the, the screen that's going to allow us to install the drivers for the Samsung Captivate on your computer. This is so we know what we uh, are dealing with when the computer first sees the phone. It will understand exactly what the device is rather than wondering. So we'll wait for that to catch up. It may take up to approximately 60 seconds to fully launch the application. It is a bit sluggish on the, the, to get started. So we'll continue to wait just a little bit and it will pop up. There it is. Okay. First screen, you want to click Next. Select your language and country. For us, we're in the U.S. English, United States of America. Say Next. Zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, the default directory is just fine. Um, program file Samsung USB drivers. Uh, so we'll say Next, which uh, that button was actually install. So now this process can take up to, you know, five to ten minutes. So allow this to happen and we'll catch up with you as soon as this is done. Okay, once that's completed, we'll have this screen. We're going to go ahead and press exit. I'll zoom back out. And we want to go back into our Captivate folder in the tethering files. And now we want to launch the keys 1.5.3. 10092 underscore 2 underscore 1. It's very important that you use this particular one. It's been proven that in later editions of keys, the tethering ability has actually been broken. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's intended to be that way. So you want to use the version that I've supplied. So go ahead and double click it. Say yes if user account control prompts you. And it's going to prepare the installation files. This can take up to, you know, 60 seconds to two minutes. So we're going to let that run, and we will catch up with you once those have completely buffered. Okay, once that screen finishes processing, we want to select our country and language. For us, it will be United States of America and English U.S. After that, we'll click Next. We're going to accept the EULA by checking this box and saying Next. Now keep in mind this next step varies depending on Samsung's server. I have seen this step fell out. If it does, keep retrying until it actually allows you to go through with it. Um, and that's the step after this one. We want to install selected product and simply check mobile phone. Say next. Now this is the step where it can fill out. Uh, looks like ours is going to go ahead and download what it needs. And this is as it's accessing Samsung's uh, online servers. So we're going ahead and getting that done. Uh, this step can be pretty lengthy as well, so we're going to catch up with you once it's 100% complete. During this step, you'll also see uh, the installer download the latest drivers for the Samsung phones. That's completely normal and you'll need those. So once this finishes, I'll catch back up with you guys at the next step. Okay, if it completes successfully, this is what we'll be presented with. Uh, create shortcut on desktop, run Samsung keys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and press finish, so that's going to put a shortcut on the desktop. Uh, that's an optional step, we're just going to allow it to do that. So it's going to register the product, so you'll see the install shield saying it'll do that. And uh, momentarily, uh, we should be able to get keys up and running. So we'll wait for that. Obviously this step can take up to 60 seconds to possibly 2 minutes. Nothing about this is quick, that's for sure. Okay, product has been registered. You may be presented with a user account control for Samsung keys momentarily after your product registers. 
down here in the bottom right after it registers um, you'll have your Samsung keys uh, system tray icon that's down here at the bottom right so we're going to allow everything to, to finish up and we'll get cracking at the next step as soon as the rest of this process is okay once your disk uh, processing has stopped um, you should be left with a blank screen, your shortcut here, and your system tray icon down there. Uh, we want to talk about the prereqs to make this work on Samsung Captivate phone. Um, first prerequisite is that you do not have USB debugging enabled, so go in your settings, applications, development, and make sure that box is unchecked at the top. Uh, that's one of the requirements. For USB settings, we want to go ahead and say ask on connection or Samsung keys. I prefer ask on connection so that way we don't. Uh, always get prompted to Samsung keys right at entering um, USB mode. Um, another big one, you have to have the stock TouchWiz installed such as this. This is the, the launcher that ships with the phone. You can't have Zeem or Launcher Pro or anything else installed otherwise keys mode doesn't work. So you must have that, no USB debugging and then set it up to either connect using Samsung keys or to ask on connection. Once you've verified those steps, we can move on to the next clip. Okay, now that we've got our prereqs out of the way, we want to go ahead and plug in our phone via USB. And when prompted, if you selected ask on connection, we want to choose Samsung keys. You should see this. This indicates to you the phone is in keys mode correctly. If so, set it aside. If you don't get this, reboot the phone and the laptop and try this step again. Now you'll notice on your computer that we are getting an installing driver dialog box. So it's going to install these drivers as well as a couple more and we're going to wait for that to complete and cycle through and we'll catch up with you as soon as those are done installing. Okay, once everything is registered with the software, we'll be presented with our Samsung Keys desktop icon as well as the system tray in the bottom. With the phone still plugged in and in Keys mode, go ahead and launch Samsung Keys. At this point, the application will launch and you'll get a connecting to device icon over here. When it connects, you'll be presented with a number along with your model ID. Now, we want to go to the tethering widget. It's the furthest to the right and it looks like a globe. It says tethering. Click the widget. When it opens, we need to click Please Set Connection Properties first. We'll go in closer for a better look at this. Okay. Please set those first. So we clicked it. We ensure that Samsung Android USB modem is selected. The connection name, you can name whatever you want. It will create a profile to where you don't have to do this step every time. Uh, for us, we're just going to go down here and pick the country. Slide the tab all the way to the bottom. USA will be the top if that's your choice. Click that, the rest of the fields will be auto filled in, and come down to the bottom and say OK. Once we do that, we'll see all of the property IDs be displayed. From here, we want to hover over this two phones button at the bottom. It's the internet connection disconnection button. This button will allow us to connect our phone for tethering. When we click it, we'll be prompted to disconnect from uh, to terminate the connection that's currently in place from the computer to the phone. This is the connection that is powering data. We want to power a modem based connection. So on this step we will say yes. After you say yes, the, phone, uh, the computer will work a little magic, do its thing. Up in the bottom right you may temporarily see uh, connection terminated. So we'll wait on that. So up here we should see connection terminated just as we just did. It's registering the user's computer to the network and the internet is connected. At this point, we want to verify tethering is working correctly. So we're going to minimize this. We're going to right click and go into the network and sharing center and change adapter settings. Um, you can get to this a number of different ways. You can go to control panel and say network connections as well. We want to ensure that our local area connection via ethernet, modem, whatever is right clicked and disabled. So for us, we're only powered over our wireless right now. We'll disable that. You'll also notice the Samsung Android USB modem connection. So now that we've disabled our wireless, we can open a browser, and there's Google. So if we wanted, we could go to www.mobiletechvideos.com 
to further prove that tethering is working and connected. So as you can see there, tethering is working perfect and we are accessing the web with our phone through the data cable to the PC. This is how you tether your Samsung Captivate being non-rooted using Samsung Keys. It's open source software and free to download. See the more info links to download this exact version of Samsung Key software as well as the Samsung USB drivers. For more information and tech tips visit mobiletechvideos.com. Check out the other videos on our channel and as always good luck.